Let's talk a bit about the open gaming license 1.1, 2.0. Wizards climb down, morality clauses, why they suck and why they're not what people think they are. Hello lovelies, I'm terrible at pimping my stuff, so here I am, pimping my stuff. Please like, subscribe, and most important of all, share, so that people can discover me and all the wonders that I offer. Wizards of the Coast has climbed down a little bit over their OGL 1.1 plans, which are due to be replaced at some point by the OGL 2.0 which may or may not be um, almost as bad, I guess. Time will tell. Uh, it's not really a time to be celebrating too much because the fight isn't over. They will be back with more fuckery. It's inevitable. What stood out to me more than the kind of overarching line of the discussion, however, were three things. Um, firstly, the overreach of the anti-tech, anti-NFT thing, two, the morality clauses, and uh, three, the failure to commit to the continuation of 1.0 A, even the uh, climb down. The morality clauses are the main thing I want to talk about, but uh, briefly, uh, I think NFTs are dumb. Um, but there are uses of blockchain technology, etc. that aren't necessarily dumb. We just don't know what they are yet, really. Blockchain is a solution in search of a problem. Uh, Stephen Radley, formerly of Paizo, is entangled in a blockchain NFT RPG project and has almost convinced me there might not be a scam. Um, there may be a redemption arc for the technology. It just remains to be seen. Um, nonetheless, Hasbro are bullshitting. They're not against NFTs. They do their own already. Uh, Power Rangers, if I remember correctly, at least. Probably others. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, nonsense. And we can't predict where this technology is going to go, what it will be used for, what it will do, uh, whether it will be something that we want people to have access to. So, And, and the other problem is if you, if you name a specific iteration of that technology, and someone comes up with a slightly differently named application of that technology, then you haven't stopped it anyway, so... What's the point? The failure to commit to the continuation of 1.0a is also a non-starter for, I would, I would hope, most creatives. Whatever they happen to say, it does present a problem for continued support of old-school gaming, and non D and D open gaming license games like like Open D six, so until and unless they sign up to new licenses, these these alternative systems such as Orc, however that happens to turn out, it, those are still all in limbo, and nobody has any certitude of whether they're even going to be able to continue producing their old school clone game or, or whatever else. Uh, at least not without legal cases, which are likely to happen if Wizards try to withdraw 1.0a. I, I guess we'll find out, but Wizards is kind of in a trap here. They could nix the alleged backward compatibility and make a, a fully new Dungeons & Dragons with new mechanics. Uh, but like with 4th edition, if they stray too far from what D&D is, then will people go along with the change, especially in the wake of all this now? Um, I don't know. Only something like 15% of people initially switched to 4th edition and not a lot of more, not a lot of extra people signed up as it went along. We're likely to see something similar play out here, but that could be minimised if that compatibility is retained. But if they get rid of the compatibility, then combined with this social shitstorm, they're probably in a, in a lot of trouble. So, I mean, the other option, if you don't do that, is 
that on D&D is compatible with all the third party publishers who can continue creating support, even using tweaked version of the old 5th edition SRD, and even reverse engineering any new mechanics that they do put into one D&D. So they're, they're kind of stuck, they're kind of boned either way there. The way to really achieve what they wanted, I, I would have said, would be to make 5th edition um, and their virtual tabletop so utterly kick-ass that everybody wanted in and wanted to use it. Um, and I think that ship has largely sailed because they overreached. You know, and after 4th edition, I'm like, are we going to actually see a virtual tabletop? Who knows, we were supposed to have one before. So that leaves us with the real topic that I want to want to get into, which is these morality clauses. I've seen a lot of people during the kerfuffle around 1.1 say that they agreed with the no NFT and no bigoted content clauses. It was it was the rest of what they were trying to do that they objected to. And I've also seen some other open licenses that have sprung up include morality clauses. Um, in particular, I would say the, the Cypher system license, which was otherwise somewhat tempting. And I hope morality clauses aren't part of Orc. Why? Do I want to make bigoted, hateful, or overtly political content? Um, well, no, but I, I don't really know. Who defines what bigoted, hateful, or overtly political content is? Whose sensibilities are we talking about? Whose morality? I'm British. We use the word cunt like punctuation, as do our Australian brothers. Americans react to this word as though you'd said Belgium or Semprini. Can I have baddies who are slavers, racists, religious puritans, fanatics, fascists? Can I set a game during the Spanish Civil War where you take the side of the anarchists? Would that be seen as too overtly political? Um, and some of the things that the fascists did in Spain uh, during the Civil War were pretty horrific. Guillermo del Toro has a, a, approached some of those issues. Uh, can we do that artistically as well? Or not? Am I going to be too hamstrung by this policy of family fun to create horror scenarios, to deal with mature situations, to tell adult stories, to produce adult games, horrific games? Is role-playing art, or is it just the same kind of anodyne, grey, Disneyfied pap that has to meet the Hayes Code, or whatever its equivalent is going to be? Who's overt politics? What counts as overt? Is Varg allowed to make games with an open licence? If they're not racist, overtly, or if they are, or if it's subtext? Is Venger allowed to have his mainstream in America? atheism will help us, uh, anti-abortion views expressed. What if we want to be apolitical, as Trolllord Games did recently, and just present a world in which bad things happen, so that there's conflict, evil to fight, the things that make adventure, after all? Or is that going to be taken as an over-political stance, right? Morality clauses are loose, fuzzy things, and they're wildly open for abuse. Who would have thought a couple of years ago that the contextual definition of race in a fantasy world would become verboten? That someone's weird subjective interpretation of Brynesque uplifted flying monkeys could be seen as offensive? That so-called progressives would be equating orcs with black people? That all the old D&D material would need a disclaimer? That someone could be banned for life from multiple conventions because of a subjective interpretation of one scene from an adult-oriented horror adventure. Yet, here we are. All these things have happened. And how much more absurd is it going to get? Who is in control? Who is going to judge? What are the standards? Is it safe to have these clauses at all in a world where people have harassed me for over 13 years over their inability to read a blog article correctly. Because that's the world we live in. And morality is relative. So how the hell do you enforce it? You can't. And what if these licenses should happen to fall into the hands of someone with politics you don't like in the future? 
what if Orc came under the sway of some far right financial group that bought out Paizo and everyone else involved? What, what then? You, you can't enforce this stuff. It doesn't make any sense. It's artistically stifling. It's nonsensical and it's open for abuse to just be used subjectively to pick on and cast out and blacklist whoever it is that you just want to get rid of for other reasons. So leave it out. Let gamers decide individually for themselves what they want to buy and what they don't want to buy, whether it's bigoted or not. Because most people, I would say, don't want to buy bigoted or hateful content. So, who cares? Zang. Imagination is a deeply personal game about depression and its effects intended to help people with invisible illnesses to broach the subject and explore it in a way in which they can have power over it. Imagination is set after the fall of mainland Britain to a strange reality breakdown. The barriers between imagination and reality, dreams and nightmares have shattered and strange things dreamed up by people caught in the event team across the land. Only those whose minds are already broken can hope to cope with exploring, understanding and combating this strangeness for the sake of the huddled refugees that sit and wait and watch from the smaller islands around the coast. A game of mental illness and art using the description system as used in Neverwhere. This game is available free, so please promote, download, host and spread as far and wide as you can. Available at post-mort.com and drive through RPG.